There we go. What's up, guys? We are out here at the Hoppy Goat Ranch with uh, Eric and Lindsay Ludden. Uh, we're in Cornville, Arizona, and uh, we are going to do a little farm tour today, kind of show you what they're doing. Um, and this is Lindsay and Eric, and they have lots of chickens, turkeys, ducks, and this is the Hoppy Goat Farm. And you can find them on Instagram under the Hoppy Goat Farm. And do you have a what's your website? Uh, thehoppygoatfarm.com and so they are a newer farm um, they've really been building up this property for about two years as well as their house and are doing a fantastic job um, and we're going to kind of take a little tour of their property um, their main focus so far has been the animals but we're going to start to kind of talk about some different opportunities for them to expand their uh, food production and like a fruit and vegetable and then just different options with the kind of property here we're in a really unique place um, off a of creek in Arizona, it's off of Oak Creek, uh, and it's a really, really beautiful property, and I'm uh, just kind of excited to show off for you guys. Um, so how long have you guys been on the property here? Oh, it's been two years. Yeah, it's been two years. Yeah, but it was vacant land, and we lived in our fifth wheel for 15 months while we built the house. And that's right over there? Yeah, right over there. Right on. And that's for sale if anybody wants to buy it. <laughs> uh, up. Contact the Hoppy Go Farm. Um, and then kind of what made you guys want to go? You're from, you were living in Phoenix before? We were living in Phoenix and we just started doing a lot of research on our food, where it came from, our health. And we decided one day we just wanted to do sustainable living and grow our own food, have chickens for eggs and for meat, and then have goats for um, dairy. And what's kind of been your biggest um, surprise here, like being becoming a new farmer? What's been like your, are they daily or? <laughs> yeah, every day there's something new. Oh, yeah. Nothing, you know, too big that's, you, know, you can't handle. Right, yeah. Um, right on, well let's kind of, if you guys want to kind of take a little kind of stroll around here and just tell us about maybe, let's go in the goat sure. pen here and meet the goats yeah. of the Hoppy Goat Ranch. They are the stars of the show. They are the Absolutely. So these are our goats. They're purebred Nubians. Um, they're still kids. They're not even a year old yet. So we'll be breeding them in September. So we'll save that. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, sorry about that. We're um, just doing some Wi-Fi changes here. We're kind of out in the sticks, so we don't get great reception um, but back to where we left off and if you guys have questions please ask uh, through typing and our wonderful cinematographer Shana will, will <laughs> give us the questions so yeah. anyways back to the story of the goats okay so um, this one Sage right here we got her from Veterans Ranch as well as Luna and then Shay little snuggler over here she is from the Simple Farm in Scottsdale so that's where we bought her and yeah, we'll be breeding them in September. Looking forward to that. And so, kind of what was your motivation to get goats? Well, we wanted, we love cheese, first of all. And cheese we wanted, great. yeah, we wanted to do dairy. So with this milk, we can make butter, kefir, cheese, yogurt, caramel. I mean, there's just so much you can do with dairy, so. Yeah, we like the idea of having the raw milk that is very difficult to obtain. Full of good bacteria. Yeah. And yeah, there's like this law in Arizona where you, I think it just changed, but you can't buy raw milk. You have to, it has to be labeled like for animal consumption only. So, but we're, you know, we're, we're raw food people, so, you know, we can just get them from our girls. Very cool. And wh who's who? Okay, so this is Sage. Sage. Shay, Shay and, Luna. and Luna. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. And um, so these guys have, what, probably about, I don't know, what is that, 40 feet or something? Yeah. About a 40 by 50 oh, yeah. pad and then a barn. Can we, you want to go take a look at the barn real quick? Sure. And, uh, sure. Kind of show where they, they sleep at night. Now, what kind of predators are you guys dealing with out here? What do you, what are you really needing to keep protected from? Well, we have a bobcat that comes around quite often, coyote. Okay. Definitely in the area, but... Try to get in. Okay. Come on, guys. Come here. 
Yeah, they just started living in here. <laughs> and they love it. Look at them. But That's where all their hay is yeah. stored. All their hay is in here. But they were in the garage for some oh, time. Oh, and they're pooping. We got some natural. This is live video, folks. And this, <laughs> this is good poop. Like, it looks, yeah, very healthy. It smells Smell. ripe as well. It smells good. <laughs> Um, you get to here, babe, why don't you go? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, so to the right here. Oh, sorry. To the right here is where they sleep. And um, yeah, we have a little cage. Hey, and just for somebody that wanted to keep goats, you know, how much work are you guys putting into this? Like, how often are you cleaning this cage or this pen? Well, the one in the garage we cleaned every single day. Like okay. that was part of our farm chores. This one we started using um, this horse bedding, it, like horse pellets. And what was the other? It's, right now it's just horse pellets. Oh, so there's not rice holes in it. No. Okay, yeah. And this is we just moved them in, so this is all kind of brand new. And it's been about maybe two weeks. So yeah, and right. it, there's no so smell. It's, no, it's actually pretty good. Yeah, it's real. I mean. It's, um, fresh and now, are you guys going to be doing any comp? Do you guys compost all this when you do scrape it up? Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a compost. We have a pallet compost bin in the back that we just yeah scoop everything up and mix it up. We'll go check that out a little bit here. Yeah. Awesome. Right Obviously, it's kind of a tool that. shed too right now. <laughs> Oh, uh, just the chickens. Where the chickens are roost. Oh, I like yeah. that thing where you do the scooping. Yeah. Let's show that off. Actually, this it's, is a really cool idea, guys. I saw it on uh, their Instagram. So we just take. It's not kitty litter. It's like it's, 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 it's called like a Sweet PVZ, and it's something that you can buy at Tractor Supply, and it's meant to be similar to kitty litter. So the the chickens are gonna roost up here at night, and they're gonna poop. They, they poop all the time, but this is going to be so much easier to clean than scraping out a whole bunch of straw or whatever. You can just run through this with a, a, a litter scooper. Yeah, um, sift it out, and then we put it right in the compost. And then that's a wonderful addition to your compost of nitrogen. So this is a really cool idea. I really think um, this. you guys should try that. Good, Perma, good job. <laughs> Perma E says, put them IMOs down and you'll never have to change that bedding. No smells ever. What is it? IMOs? Yeah. I don't know what that is. In my opinions? <laughs> we, we don't change opi oh, is that opinion beddings? <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure so, if IMOs I'll do the rest are karma. Later. But then you can also like inspect the poop really well because then you can see if they are sick, are or, sick yeah. or anything. And Which is one of the best ways I found for my chickens. Like if they're not doing well and they have like a watery stool or you know something's right. funky, it's a good way to kind of check it out. Right on. Yeah. Well, let's move from this research goats. right there. That's amazing, guys. Okay, so we probably have some. Uh, Little goat girls waiting for us here. That's right. Not too bad. All right, ladies. Oh, sorry, she didn't hear. That's okay. <laughs> Everyone's gonna have poop on their shoes. Wait on. Farm. Um, is this anything? Is that like super cool shit? That's the milking barn. It's not. Yeah, it's not quite. Not ready done yet. yet. Right on. And so, how old will they be when they, you could breed them and produce milk? Well, they need to be at least eighty pounds. So. Okay. What is it now? About 50, 40? They're about 60. 60 yeah. Really? Wow, yeah. She's a little bit lighter. She's, you know, a couple months younger. But the little girl? Yes. Yeah, so. Alright, um, we do have a broody hen if you want to see her. Yeah. <laughs> we have some eggs under her and let's go back out this And way. so how many chickens do you guys have right now? 19. <laughs> 19 chickens. How many ducks? We have four ducks. And then, and then uh, one turkey. turkey. And then we've got a green bean here who's visiting. But has to be tied up because she likes to chase all the chickens around. Okay, Perma E said it's indigenous microorganisms. It's a homemade oh, microbial. IMO, like from Korean micro natural farming. Microbial oh. inoculant. Oh, okay. oh, interesting. See, we need to learn these acronyms. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So 
this is a coop we actually built from all the scrap material from the house. So it was just in the... That's awesome. And then... So, and, and a brood, a broody hen basically means that she is uh, on her eggs and doesn't really like to be bothered. <laughs> so, yeah, and she... Actually, she's not too bad. No, she's really sweet about it. I mean, I lift her up every day and she's okay, but... What are you guys doing? Yeah, we just... Because she would not lay an egg and she just kept being broody, so we decided to... Let her do her thing and... Yeah, we tried just, you know, there's so many suggestions on what to do. Take her out, dunk her in water, but she didn't want to do anything. Uh -oh. So then, um, yeah, 20 days from now. No, 19 days. How many eggs are in there? Eight. And what kind of chicken is that? Well, they're a mixed breed, so we have purebred chickens around, like Easter Raiders and Americanas, but these guys are a mixed breed, so... And then what kind of ducks are these? Uh, the Peking and the runner ducks. And yep. are the runner the brown and white? Yes. Okay, and the yeah. Peking. Now, are you using those for uh, uh, egg production or, um, or meat production, either or? We're or? gonna do both because two of the girls we're gonna use for eggs, and then the two runner ducks we believe are boys, and um, we might process them later on this year. <laughs> we're not sure. Gotcha. I like it. Right on. Yeah. Okay, well, let's go kind of take a look. I want to kind of show off um, some of the back of the property here where you, you want to do a pumpkin patch. Um, yeah, and this is a pretty one. raw piece of land. Uh, we're in, what was this considered? Mid desert? Like, or, or high desert? Yeah, I'd say high. We're at um, 3,100 feet. So, so 3,100 feet elevation. You get snow, you get a freeze, but also you get over 100 degrees pretty frequently. Right. Yes. Um, so it's a really interesting climate here. Um, but the cool thing is, is there's actually water all around here. Um, the Oak Creek, which is uh, runs all the way up almost to Flagstaff, um, is right behind, like right over here. Um, and, and you do have a well on property, which isn't that... Uh, isn't that common for Arizona? Right, and our well, hey, you can walk in we kind of left out because it we drilled it and it became an artesian well. So, so this is um, you guys wanted to do a pumpkin patch here, yeah? True. Yes. And so, what are you, what what is what are you guys doing with this black plastic? Well. As you can see, weeds are prolific around here, so we were trying to cook them down in the meantime while we're waiting for the right time of year to, to plant them. So, so far it's it's worked pretty well. Right on. And, uh, yeah. I'm just killing the weeds. Basically, so you can, it's called uh, solarizing, and you take the plastic, um, and the only uh, kind of thing I would say about this particular application is what I usually do is bury it, so it almost like this creates a distillery and you don't have any air going in there but other than that this is a really good way to uh, kill any kind of weed seeds or um, grasses or whatever any kind of also like viruses if you plant something and, and you get some kind of like a, a mosaic virus or different types of disease that can live in the soil bugs that can live in the soil this can get rid of that um, so they want to do a pumpkin patch here uh, what we're going to do is actually uh, I'm going to be helping them here, and what we're going to do is really mulch this really well with a lot of the manures they have. There's also a lot of trees on property uh, that are either dead or they're going to be cut. And so we're going to take that organic material, just like in Phoenix, this soil here um, is not very, it's, it doesn't have a lot of structure to it. So you have a lot of sand and silt and clay even, but you don't have that organic matter coming from like these acacias. You know a little bit from the cottonwoods and whatnot but the organic matter is what's going to be lacking so we're going to put in a bunch of that and, and pumpkins like to grow um, with a lot of compost a lot of really rich soil so we're going to do uh, like manures compost and mulch and usually a rule of thumb for planting pumpkins for halloween is plant them on july 4th so definitely and you guys give them a follow on instagram it's the hoppy goat farm to kind of follow their journey um, and we're gonna kind of keep on walking here. Should we go which way? You guys kind of lead the way. Okay, um, I guess we can go through the creek and then Beautiful. walk across the, the bridge. The bridge. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get some good, uh, How's the um, Wi Fi signal? All good? good. 
Right this is our burn pile, so we do fires every once in a while. Okay. Hey, where is your compost? It's the back by the... Oh, okay, over yeah. there. Cool. By the hot awesome. garden. Right on. And so, we probably don't want to go all the way down there. Yeah, no. just, you know. But if you can see here, that's Oak Creek, which then turns into the Verde River. Um, this is a natural flowing desert river. It goes through a lot of the state of Arizona. Yep. Um, and it is a very good water source for them. And there's a lot of water kind of underneath here, an aquifer. Um, and we've got, uh, like she was saying, an artesian well, which is pretty rare. Um, and a really, really good score for these guys. Now I see over here too, I've got a little red structure. Yes, okay, so that's going to be um, our greenhouse. And I guess the idea is once we sell the fifth wheel, we'll finish the greenhouse. Do you hear that guys? The fifth <laughs> wheel is still for sale. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's go over the compost. out of there already. Yeah, we, we're not sure which time because we just throw a whole bunch of stuff in here anyway. But. And then this slides up so you can get the compost from the bottom. Right. This is a really simple but effective way to compost, you guys. It's three pallets, well maybe four, kind of a base here. Uh, this is a little bit more of a, a fancier version with the slider here. Um, but this will do the trick. And then I would let that grow. I've had yeah. the best squash ever from my compost, okay. like, like squash and pumpkins. Yeah, we have one other I've been one waiting here. to turn it, but I wasn't sure if we should transplant it or just let it go. I don't know. You could just let it go. And another thing with turning compost, compost will all break down eventually. Um, and there's some people kind of more purists that say don't turn it because then you're kind of encouraging a more aggressive decomposition. Okay. I turn my, I got things to do with that compost but that's just you know it's not going to be bad if you don't turn it um, rule of thumb with the compost is usually want it about as wet as a wrung out sponge okay. if you get it too wet it'll actually go anaerobic and that is when you get funky smells um, let's take a look here well in the middle I want to it should be pretty hot and this is mostly yeah it's oh it's pretty warm in the middle oh yeah this is good and so that's where your primary decomposition and even though this is a lot of animal manure, um, it actually doesn't smell like poop. Um, it is a, almost has a sweet smell to it. And that's what you want to look for in compost is not necessarily uh, like a soaking wet compost. You want it to be, you need air in there and you should have at least 30% air space in your compost, in your soil, in the ground. Air is a key to producing those aerobic microbes that are going to be so good. Yeah, maybe it's hit me here. It is still poop. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, but yeah, and that is the one, the one thing too, like when you have animals, if you're not composting your material, you're, you're kind of wasting it um, right. and creating more waste for other people. Ooh, little alligator lizard eating ants. Um, okay, cool. Well, let's go yeah. take a look at this greenhouse over here. Okay. And so you guys obviously are going to get into more of the food production end of things. Yes. Um, and this is going to be what? Probably like a 10 by 15 or 15 by 15 greenhouse? What is it right now? Um, yeah. I think it is 10 by 15. 10 by 15? No. Or 10 by 16? And then you guys put in a nice little drain here, right. which is key. And yeah. you got it on a, like a slab of concrete. So we have a French drain that just kind of goes into, I dug a big 3 by 4 pit with awesome. some Rock fabric and rocks, yeah. So. Awesome. We have water lines, electric. We actually put this in here for humidity. So this is a pretty fancy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it is a water and electricity. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, now you guys had talked about doing some vertical hydroponic farming in here. Right. Now what what kind of spurred that as a uh, um, something to what motivated that idea? Well, it was primarily I just wanted to have something in a controlled environment that you don't have to fight, you know, certain, you know, elements. Elements, yeah, and uh, just have a continuous, you know, sort of flow of a lot of the foods that we eat, you know, lettuce and kale and herbs and, and those types of items. So. And how long, 
in the season here, do you have like freezing temperatures? I know it kind of varies, but like from wind to wind, did you guys get cold last year? Uh, it was like I think summer to February. Yeah, okay, so April. It's a fairly small window. Yeah. Okay. Um, as far as the freezing temps go. Right. But Very cool. Yeah. Really cool. Well, we'll keep updated with them to see the progress of this. I know. I can't wait for this to be done. And then, our, so you guys had also talked about doing some a light supplementing up here as well, like, um, so not all, like possibly doing some LED lights in here or something. Yeah, we, we have, have those. Yeah. Yeah, I've been looking into like some of the LED stuff for efficiency. You want to do microgreens and. And then you were gonna do like a polycarbonate double. Right. Yeah, twin layer, twin layer polycarbonate walling. And Based on my research, it just diffuses the sunlight a lot better, so you don't get any hot spots and cool. plants. But if it hails, it's not gonna crack it. Yeah. Gra glass greenhouses are, it, they're beautiful and whatnot, but it can be, yeah. 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 They have their own challenges, but they're definitely far more aesthetic pleasing. They are beautiful, <laughs> right? Yeah. And all right, cool. Well, let's kind of take a walk over to yeah. the irrigation canal there. Oh yeah, whoops. You guys want to go this way? Sure. Here's that uh, Millennium again. <laughs> <laughs> Still for sale. <laughs> 2000 Millennium. <laughs> 36 foot. <laughs> and you guys also built this house, yeah? Right. And so that's, so they lived in this trailer for two years and then built this house to really uh, what they wanted. Another thing that we've been talking about here is it's already set up. But this is ready to go for rainwater harvesting. Um, so what we're gonna do is put some, some barrels and tanks here um, to really capture that rainwater and mitigate use of the well, mitigate use of any water really, because this is gonna be full of um, minerals and atmospheric nitrogen that actually makes your plants grow better. Yeah, so pretty, pretty cool. Come here, Walt. Come on, bud. Oh. She's like, why can't I come? Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Bean. Okay, so down here we have this huge stead, unfortunately, but um, cottonwood tree. And then you guys have found some uh, special treasures down here, yes, right? Whoa, this year. it's me on the <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, this no, that was that was, that was quite a treasure to find. Um, morel <laughs> mushrooms. I was actually down here weed whipping some tall grass just underneath this dead tree, and I almost cleared them all out with a weed whipper, but uh, luckily I stopped. And that's and morels are actually a mycorrhizal mushroom, so they're really you can't really grow them in a controlled environment. They need mycorrhizal mushrooms need another organism and symbiosis to produce a mushroom. Um, whereas, like something like an oyster mushroom does not. Um, okay, so how are we doing on the Wi Fi signal? Yeah, I was gonna say, it might be spotty down. So maybe we'll just kind of hang here and then go back up but, uh, and do the front. But um, so tell us a little bit about this little uh, creek clone here. So, this is actually an irrigation ditch, it's man made and it goes, I don't know, like a mile up throughout Cornville, and we just happen to have the tail end of it, which is beautiful, and we call it Little Creek. Um, it's primarily used by ranchers you know, around the area, and you only are allowed to tap into it if you're grandfathered in prior to a certain Water year. rights, basically. Water rights, we don't, right? And we don't have water yeah, rights. So we don't so. have that, so we don't, can't use but it. But you have an artesian well. Exactly. Yeah. So, so uh, you got like the gold star. That's right. Big time, yeah. Yeah. But the cool thing about this property is when we bought it, all of this was overgrown and we didn't really even cross the ditch. So we had no idea really what was back beyond it. And then we started clearing stuff out, making little pathways, and we found like this sea of blackberry bushes. Which are right over there. Yeah. yeah, right over here. So we got some blackberry bushes there. We're kind of limited on signal, so I think we'll probably kind of go back up and kind of sure. go over the front yard. Yeah. But, um, that's another thing, when you're looking at a property, sometimes you just find these treasures, like a, a grove of blackberry bushes yes. or, or uh, an old tree. You know, what some of the things we're talking about now to go into food production is um, because there is an artesian spring here, you know, utilizing that water to in some of this dead wood to, to inoculate that with mushrooms and have like an ongoing mushroom harvest. Um, 
or, or redirecting some of the water uh, to basically allow um, uh, some type of watering system that's a little bit more passive and, and naturally fed. Just it's all ideas right now because you guys have a lot going on. You both have full-time jobs, right? Right. <laughs> okay. So and and you're a teacher and, and a you teacher. are. I work in IT department. IT. Okay. So this is like a labor of love and a half. It's a lot of hard work, and I got to give you props, guys, for everything you've done already. Oh, um, and all like the 50 ideas we're gonna give you now. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> All right, so let's go to the front here. And Lindsay, now you you had really thought about making the front yard more of your uh, your garden, your kitchen garden. True. Okay. Now, what was your thinking behind that? Well, okay. So originally we were going to turn it into like this circle drive where people can drive up and. But the space is so huge, and I'm like, we need to utilize this for food. So, so who needs a driveway? Let's get food. Yeah, get rid right? of I fully agree with that, that statement there. Um, and so, now, a little bit about this property. It is in a flood zone, correct? True, it's a 500-year flood zone. 500-year flood zone. So, one of the things, and we got a little bit of garden stuff going on here. Yeah. Some potatoes, sunflowers, tomatoes, uh, and some hops. Yeah, these yeah. Are. Eric, you brew your own beer with these hops. I do brew my own beer, yes. And uh, these are some seedlings I didn't have any room for in the new hop garden I built. So, and so what I, kind of hops are those that you're growing here? Um, these are, I'm kind of trying every varietal to see what okay. works best, but uh, these are Galena and Sterling. Okay. Um, are those pretty standard? Or are they kind of. You know, I really haven't brewed too much with them, so okay. I'm kind of excited to get a good harvest and see what I can come up with. Um, right on. Yeah. Cheers to that. Yeah. Right on. Cool. Another little fire area right here. Very cool. Okay. okay. So now this is all your property here up to about kind of the that shed, shed right yeah. there, right? So we wanted to, or we want to, align the property line with fruit trees. Um, and then this whole area we're going to have to fence in for the garden. So one of the things we were talking about doing and kind of... Oh, it should. It's... Surprised it didn't know switch. Um, okay, so one of the things we're going to be doing here, guys, is, or we've talked about, is really, you can see there's a little bit of a slope here, kind of headed towards the house. And in, in Arizona, when it rains, it really comes down here. Oh, yeah. So what we really want to do is we want to slow that water down and put it where we want it, okay? And, and how we're going to do that is a succession of berms and swales. And what that means is almost just like up and down like a roller coaster. And what will happen is as that water kind of rushes down this hill towards their beautiful house, we're going to take it and we're going to use it to grow things uh, and we're going to do it passively. So a lot of gardening, if you think ahead and do these um, kind of structural integrations to your property, uh, you can really A, mitigate water use, uh, B, take advantage of a free resource and C, um, really possibly save your, your structures or house from any kind of damage. You know, it's not like a guaranteed thing, but if you can set, like planting the rain or, or, or um, one book that I really recommend everybody that wants to garden reads is Gaia's Garden, G-A-I-A. -A, garden, Gaia's Garden. It's by Toby Hemingway, who uh, unfortunately passed this year. Uh, but he is a permaculture god in my book, and that is a book that I use as kind of my Bible. Um, but again, you know, when you start to think about it, the water is going to take the uh, path of least resistance, okay? Water abides by gravity, and if you can create these spaces where you want the water to be, um, you're going to, again, you're going to be better off. You're, you're, you're utilizing the natural um, flow of things and, and really taking advantage of... Uh, the natural water that's coming from the sky. Um, let's go over there and then we'll probably wrap it up. If anybody has any questions, we're probably going to wrap it up here in a couple minutes. And this time I'm going to post it to YouTube, so you're going to be in charge of saving it. <laughs> and so this is all, uh, you've got kind of this, also this sloping property here too, right? Right. Very cool. So we're going to talk about... Side. Yeah, part of that is
off. And so what do you have going on over here, Eric? So I have uh, another hop garden going. Okay. And so how are you, what's like kind of the idea here? So, um, I have sure. spark. Well, yeah. All right, well, guys, we're having a little bit of connection issues, but just want to, again, guys, the Hoppy Goat Farm, that's T-H-E-H-O-P-P-Y-F-A-R-M, Eric and Lindsay Ludden, thank you so much. They've, like, super hospitality, fed us, and uh, gave us a place to stay, let Green Bean run around and splash in their creek. Um, but I'm going to put this up on YouTube. I'll let you guys know uh, when I do that. And thank you for everybody that stopped by, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, now save video.